Imagine, you come home from a long day. You settle in before having a nice hot supper with your family and maybe some of your rich friends or just some guests. Then you go upstairs to shower and wind down for the night, only to realize that your house was burglarized while you were stuffing your face. While you were cleaning off your plate, they were cleaning out your closet. I know that I don't typically order a side of robbery for dinner, but then again, I do enjoy the occasional heist for dessert. But those two dishes were always on the main menu for the dinner set gang. Yes, their name was the dinner set gang and they were good. They were quick too. I mean, these guys would come and go faster than me after 20 minutes of foreplay. They were a gang of disciplined professionals that consisted mainly of Peter Salerno and his brother-in-law, Dominic Latella. Peter was a master thief. And Dominic was his trusted lookout man, and sometimes they brought along Peter Salerno's other relative, Carmine Stanzioni, as a getaway driver. Their family relation helped cement the trust and bond between Peter and Dominic during their criminal exploits, which they developed after marrying two Italian twins, the Savino sisters, Gloria and Sandra. The police even had to admit that Peter is the prototypical standard of what every cat burglar attempted to be, because he was almost flawless. The police also claimed that the duo made the same kind of money stealing as Wall Street professionals. They would rob folks down south in Palm Beach, Florida, and then follow their victim crowd as they migrated north for the different seasons before again robbing them in New York and Connecticut too. And I'm referencing the, the, the crowd itself, not the same victims just over and over. I want to clarify that. They were originally inspired and taught by a gentleman named Frank Bova who was an army ranger during World War II that hunted and stole documents from the Nazi regime. They developed a brilliant plan to rob the rich and elites that involved the social life of their victims. From what I understand, in rich folk etiquette, you socialize over dinner and spend time socializing afterwards at the dinner table sometimes for hours. It was considered rude or against the etiquette to excuse yourself from the table outside of going to the restroom or for something brief like a cigarette break maybe. Peter and Dominic happened to pick up on the gatherings and the way those attending played into the rules of their social class, leading to the thieves realizing that they could rob those people's houses while they were downstairs eating and socializing. And that's exactly what they did through the 1960s and 70s and a little bit of the 80s. Peter would scale to the second story of these houses and mansions while Dominic played the lookout role, making sure nobody headed to the upstairs portions of the houses. If somebody started to head upstairs or if there was any potential danger heading their way, Dominic would use a light whistle to alert Peter. See, they had a simple but sharp plan that they would execute in stealing jewelry, cash, and valuables, while their victims were just downstairs adding inches to their waist and inflating their egos. They kept their burglaries to around three minutes, which is actually longer than I need if you remember what I was saying earlier about coming and going. No shame in my game, and surely no shame in the dinner set's game either. Latella always gave Salerno the credit for being a mastermind and having a sixth sense to find where the valuables were always stashed in such a short span of time. They would find their potential targets on who's who's lists, and Forbes magazine with one of their notable victims being the Pillsbury family. At the height of their criminal enterprise, the dinner set gang was stealing an average of about $250,000 worth of valuables per job. The FBI estimated they were responsible for several hundred burglaries, with the total value of their haul ranging from $75 million to a staggering $150 million in stolen jewels. However, the estimated amount is only an estimate as their true haul was never fully figured so it's not clear whether all the crimes were truly their work or the work of copycat thieves. That never deterred the work of detectives Billy Adams and Jim Hirsch, who stayed on the trail for the dinner set gang for decades. During their tenure, they also robbed the founders of Reader's Digest magazine while they were downstairs having dessert. Another notable robbery was north of Palm Beach and Home Sound, which is exclusive only to the incredibly rich. There's only a single road in and out. Because of that, Peter and Dominic decided to invade that property by raft. They then broke into the mansion upstairs while the DuPont family was downstairs having dinner. The gang wound up stealing $12 million in rare carrot diamonds and sapphires. They would go to New York to fence their jewelry to a guy named Wally Gans. Gans was a true jewelry expert from the Manhattan Diamond District, 
but he was also an underground fencer, so he knew how to extract the most cash out of their jewelry hauls. Even after fencing fees and kickups to some of their mobbed-up associates, Peter and Dominique Latella were still coming away with large sums of money. I can't go into detail about every robbery because they did commit hundreds and most robberies follow the same M.O. Over time, they attempted to go legit, but they started to run out of money after living a somewhat lavish lifestyle. They opened a construction company, but it crumbled with the economy during the market crash of the 80s, and to make matters worse, Peter Salerno had developed a dangerous addiction to that very bad boogery sugar before winding up in prison for a short stint. When he got out, he found out his wife tragically had breast cancer. Gloria and him unfortunately had no insurance, and they certainly had no more money, especially for the critical treatments that Gloria needed. That led them back to their roots, and in 1991, they headed back upstate. They decided they were just going to start robbing without extensive research and without knowing all of their targets. Peter and Dominic began a rampage, attempting to rob 40 houses in a month once while attempting to summon enough money for his wife's treatments. They made a mistake and robbed one of the same houses they robbed 20 years prior, leading to the two earlier mentioned detectives realizing the boys were back in town. Yes, the boys were back in town. Finally, on the date of January 21st, 1992, their shining luck went from the clarity of a diamond to tarnishing silver in the quiet town of Westport, Connecticut. As Peter was scaling into a house, a woman who was home at the time heard them and called the police. Within minutes, the property was being swarmed with law enforcement and search dogs. Both Peter and Dominique knew their time was up and they were immediately arrested without any sort of violence or confrontation. Detectives Hirsch and Adams connected them to multiple crimes and were able to get them convicted, leading to Dominic serving nine years and Peter serving four years in prison. And by the way, Gloria did thankfully survive. This is one of the stories I truly enjoyed in the end because no one lost their life, which is always a positive ending. And also, I want to ask for you all's forgiveness for this video being a little bit short and without a ton, ton of detail. Um, I started school recently and... I also was hosting some family that came down from the north to stay here for a week, so I haven't had a lot of free time because on top of that, I am a father as well, and I have to make money too, so again, I appreciate you all for rocking with me. I hope you enjoyed this little short story. I also want to say going forward that I do not own the rights of any of the individuals in my stories, and I will not claim to. I just want to be careful with copyright claims. Thank you, and if you could... Please like, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.